might save that one to make a little something out of. Look at this maple. Look at that grain. See how nice and straight that is? How nice and smooth? I think I'm going to save that piece. I've actually got a little bit of a check right here. I'm turning it to face me and then trying to start it right there on the edge and then switch around to the other side.
Thanks, boy. Hey everyone, welcome back to the outpost. Glad you had time to stop by. What we're actually going to do today is we're going to paint this skull just like the other ones that I showed you. And she's going to try to duplicate an American flag. I'm going to let her tell you about the whole process, but that's why we had this skull sitting here. And these horns, I'll let her tell you about that. But um, this is a skill that you might want to learn how to do in case um, you're ever around a farm and you can pick up something like this because we were talking before how you can actually hang these up on the wall and have a light mounted in the back of them and then the light kind of comes out the nasal area and the eyes and it just kind of looks cool at night so um, I'm going to go ahead and turn it over to her and let her ex kind of explain to you the process of what we're doing today all right um, it's a pretty good thing to learn how to do because I have a lot of the farmers that have that special steer or whatever and they really want to use this as a trophy case and um, putting the lights on it just gives a little more ambiance. What I do is I, after they're completely cleaned off, I will decide on what I'm gonna do. Sometimes I'll do a, a pour, and today we're gonna do an aqua paint. Before I get started, I usually take a test on the skull as to what the color's gonna look like. And then I will coat it with a primer. You might notice that I had a primer and a paint mixture. That way it double coats it and it's not a nice heavy sealer for it. Okay, in order to get started, you need a container that's deep enough to be able to submerge the skull completely. Mine took about four and a half, five gallons. Now, I'm trying to duplicate a, an American flag. So you have to remember that you're mirror, making a mirror image. What's on here is going to mirror what's gonna be on the skull. All right, let's get started.
What are you gonna do from here? Um, once I wipe off all the excess paint off the top, then I'll pull it straight out. You wanna get all of this gone. Newspaper works much better, but I wanted to try this today. And hopefully it'll work. You never know what the pattern is going to look like when you pull it out, but the main control you have is what colors and how much of each color. That's the fun of it all. You never know what you're going to come up with. Now just let it sit and dry and then I'll seal it. Once it's dry, I use the enamel clear coat and it seals them. That way it doesn't attract all the dust and the dirt and they stay nice and smooth. I also don't do a lot with the horns because most people want them the rough, rugged look. So I just take a, a little bit of um, floor wax and polish them off a little just so that they're smooth. And then when I reattach the horns, depending on what the customer wants, like this one, I took twine and wrapped it with an old flag material and just wrapped it around and then that kept them sturdy. On the back, we were talking about the lights earlier. I used the battery pack right on this one and every skull is gonna be different as to where the light comes out from the front. This one, I try to stuff as many lights down the front so that it'll come down through the nasal cavity. And then I also like to put one on the top and then into the eye sockets. Eye sockets, right here. <laughs> so that way at night on the wall, it kind of reflects a little bit out. This is another one, a uh, gentleman rides Harley Davidson. He chose the colors. He chose the colors and it does not have the horn casing on it. It was a uh, roping steer that he had had and he won big prize ticket on it. So he used the horns for other things because they were sawed off on the end. So I just sprayed this with a metallic and it also has lights on the back. Okay, you might notice a difference in this skull as well as this one. This one, I did what's called an acrylic dump. I take the colors, put them into a container, and then I just dump it. And then you move it around and manipulate to get the patterns that you desire. So you, same, same technique, but this one's using water, and this one uses acrylic paints. Okay, then once it's here, I'll put a screw on the front and on the back for stability and then it is complete. Okay, we're gonna do the final touch of the jute rope to seal between the horn.
Okay, we were just trying to figure out what you actually call this process. I call it, she said skull painting. But this, anyway. This is aqua painting. Because of the water. Because of the water. This is acrylic painting. Acrylic dump. Acrylic dumping. Okay. Anyway, it was pretty cool to see that. So like I said earlier, if you're around a place that has skulls or maybe you're wandering through the woods and you see one of some dead animal, instead of just bypassing it or whatever, you might pick it up, take it home, where you could make something kind of cool that you could put lights in it, kind of like indirect lighting, uh, but actually utilizing something that you have uh, found and it's different and it's unique. So these are actually cow skulls. Um, I'm sure any skull would work, right? Yep, absolutely. Yeah, so, um, and the horns, they kind of, you know, make that uh, stand out as well too, especially this long horn right here. That's really cool. Anyway, hope you enjoyed this little segment, you know, invited her up here because this, this channel is all about skills and techniques and things like that um, to use in the outdoors. And this is definitely something that you would find in the outdoors. So if you enjoyed this segment, please leave me some comments down in the section and I will be sure and get back to her, especially if you've got questions. This was my first time seeing it. And uh, although I did watch it, you know, I don't think I could duplicate it. Um, it would probably turn out like a big red, white, and blue mess, okay? <laughs> but anyway, um, if you got questions on that, I'll try to get those answered for you. But we appreciate you coming up here and uh, showing that to the Outpost community. That's a wrap. Thank you.
Hey everyone, I just thought those skulls were just such a cool idea when uh, that lady was sharing with me what she could do with them. Of course, I had never seen that process, but I wanted to share it with you when she talked about it. And, you know, I kind of thought that, that was really cool to be able to take something, you know, a lot of people like the horns, but the skull, you know, not many people uh, I see are, have the skulls hanging. But to be able to take something like that, put the lighting in the back of it, and kind of get some referred lighting or, um, you know, off type lighting where it comes out the uh, sockets and, and the nasal cavity and some of the other areas, you know, I thought that was really cool. So you could take anything that you could find out in the woods like that and actually make a piece of art out of it. You know, and this channel is all about life skills and, um, you know, sharing with you arts and crafts uh, that other people have. And, you know, like I said, I just thought that was so cool. I just had to share it with you guys. Anyway, be sure and don't forget about our giveaways. Go check the store out. My son's been working real hard on that. And we've also got some surprises coming up in the near future. So I'll let you know about that when it gets time, closer to the time. Anyway, hope everyone has a great evening. Take care, and I look forward to seeing you back up here at the Outpost in the future. Thank you.